So this is Vision on TV and we're reporting from the sit-in at SOAS following a day of demonstrations across London. OK, and we're going to interview these two about what happened today. So, one second, I've just got to cut to the other camera. What did happen today? Um, well, I had a lecture, I missed the beginning, but um, pretty much today there were protests all across London in different factions, all students, um, school students, university students, and those who support us. Um, and essentially we just tried to not disrupt, but to get as much attention across London as possible. Um, I think Bernard probably know more about it than I do. <laughs> well, really, I, I arrived a bit late at the demonstrations and uh, just found about uh, 30 or 40 school kids walking towards Parliament Square and we, uh, we rallied people together and the, the police were kettled us a bit for initially. We had about 200 people there and we all just galloped off. We all just jumped up and started running and the police didn't know where we were going. We ended up outside Scotland Yard and then we were still running and running and running and just charged down Victoria and held the road junction at Victoria and uh, stopped all the traffic there and the police were reacting to us at that point. And what happened then was we, uh, we charged down the road, down Buckingham Palace Road to Buckingham Palace to uh, let the Queen know what, we were, um, what our views were and then the police did manage to kettle us although there was lots of uh, big policemen sort of running and slipping over on the, on the mud and the ice. Then we were kettled for about half an hour there and the police made, did us a moving kettle which is a very exciting new thing where um, they heard you a bit like um, a very, very um, inefficient sheepdog. Uh, um, they herded us all the way back up to Trafalgar Square over the period of about an hour and a half and then we were kind of in Trafalgar Square running around a bit and uh, when I left people were just uh, attacking the police line and trying to get through and the latest news is that protests are continuing on Regent Street. Um, oh, no, no, no. Yes, yes, go on, um, your experience. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, we were, I'm in the Samba band, so we kind of had a different experience. We stayed along Oxford, Oxford Street um, and tried to kind of get attention there. However, there were several kettles as well, I think that's kind of their new tactic, <laughs> they're kind of trying to scare us with them. But it was, it was good. Um, and as, as far as I know right now, um, there are still people kettled in Trafalgar Square. I don't know if they've gotten out or not. But um, it's been interesting. It's been good. I'd say less violence today on the part of general public, or I mean general protesters. And the police, would you say? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't quite as extreme as other days, which is, I hope the media will be a bit more positive. It, it's, they, they, won't really, they don't really have a narrative for this one, because the previous two, um, it's been very easy to construct a media narrative of violence. And in this case, um, I think it's going to be slightly more tricky for them to do so, because there wasn't any clear instance of smashing or focal points. But a lot of members of the public will have seen students demonstrating for the first time. And actually, um, I think they will have be, people are a bit puzzled at first when they see a demonstration. But when they, when they see people from the crowd that look just like, you know, their friends' kids or people that they know or people that they teach, then I think it's a way of garnering public sympathy. So um, what, was, what were passers-by reaction when you were running around being chased by policemen? Um, I have to say, I did see several terrified children, which was really saddening for me, I thought. Um, I think mostly because it was a lot of noise, a lot of kind of rushing around. Um, and people aren't really used to that when they're doing their Christmas shopping. So um, <laughs> it was good. But um, I think there were a couple of shocked people um, sympathetic on our behalf. Um, I know that one of my friends saw a young, I mean, a 13, 12, 13-year-old boy being, you know, roughed around by the police and when they were arresting him and um, a lady was standing next to my friend who was a mother and was like this is like they're doing it to my child which is um and people aren't used to that I and mean, we think because of the narratives in the media people are thinking that the children like the children and protesters are being ridiculously violent when that's not necessarily the case so hopefully that'll come across so um you made some interesting points there about um violence and the police and such things but and the media but the media it completely ignores these sort of demonstrations unless there's violence so the violence actually is quite functional for getting media coverage you know I think it depends what your definition of violence is if you think that violence is the smashing of the windows at Millbank then yes it's good for media attention I wouldn't say that's violence that's there's a difference between violence against people and violence against property when the violence is towards people it's a completely different matter and shouldn't be in the same category I think violence that has or action direct action that has a purpose is good um, however, when that, when that can hurt people, um, that's just too far. Not good for any situation. <laughs> Alex, I remember you saying a few weeks ago that you didn't believe in direct action. Do you think your feelings have changed over the past few weeks? I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I take a bit of a... Um, yeah, I definitely... 
take a lot of what Alex has been saying, but I think I think it's really important that we don't we don't fall into this this pattern of just talking about violence and actually because I think it's a way of avoiding talking about the politics of what we're doing and that's the crucial thing. That's why these people are so passionate. It's the sheer unfairness of the government's policy to say right. Uh, to just pull away the ladder for this entire generation of young people. That's what they're doing, especially for um, school kids, who um, the first generation that won't get an educational, who won't, won't have free university or very cheap university. Um, educational maintenance allowance is being taken away from the poorest children, um, and they're, they're 100% cut to this university. Other universities as well are getting swinging cuts. And this, um, I think it's, it's a way of detracting from the politics of what we're doing and the adventure of what we're doing by just talking about violence. And I think it's really, really good today that what we saw was uh, direct action um, in, in the very real sense of the word. So, you know, protesters popping up in places like the city or Oxford Street where people don't associate with protest. Yeah, that, that, would, that would definitely was. But I think that was, that's kind of what I hoped was going to happen for the day because I knew there was a plan to go down to Bile, but we also had this other plan because of the risk of kettling. And I think it was really nice to see this come into action because it wasn't the general run of the mill. We're going to protest the government and we're going to march down Whitehall again for the third time. Yeah. <laughs> it was, um, it was, it was, it was good. And I think this type of, I hope that this type of protest will continue. I think it's so. Um, so, so there's going to be a vote on this at some point soon. Do you think the fifteenth? Do you th- do you think it will continue after that? And how can you build it so it continues after that? <laughs> I think all of this depends on what happens on the 15th. Um, personally, I hope that it continues no matter what the outcome is, because this is, it isn't just about education. This isn't an, this is an educational battle. Well, it's just the first in many that are to come. I mean, we have the nurses just at UCH, they're just down the road. I mean, so many people are doing chip strikes that we've seen recently. It's, it's not just our battle, it's battle for loads of people. I don't know if battle's the right word, but... <laughs> yeah, OK, to sum up... I think it might be the... It's certainly a way of seeing things that more people are coming around to. This is what the government's doing is an assault on the entire welfare, post-1945 welfare state. And I think this is something hugely significant, and it shouldn't, its significance should not be underestimated. It's similar to what happened under Thatcher, and I think not that many people anymore have fond memories of what happened under Thatcher, because it was a very defi- divisive policy. Especially this, not in Scotland. Yeah, and this is a similar we time. Still don't vote there. Um, this is a similar time in that sense, because the government's basically saying, right, well, well we're going to shrink the state, but we're, not, we're also going to have very low taxes on corporations and banks, particularly the banking levy's gone down recently, which hasn't uh, got much news, but I think that's quite a significant indication of the priorities of this government, whereby they're not... Um, they're not really focusing on look uh, on using the state to benefit the people, but actually using the state to benefit the rich, and that that's at the cost of um, the people, the most needed in society. And it will it will mean that our society isn't as I don't think I think it, it can be damaging, but hopefully what will happen is uh, the way the way we fight against this will produce a better society because this generation that's now on the streets, hopefully in 20 years will be. Um, will have more influence to to make a more equitable and just society. I know that's what the 68 generation said, but I hope it works this time. Okay, um, well actually we've run out of time, so we have to do another show. Um, but thank you very much for that really enlightening view of the student demonstrations. Okay. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> Thanks, Amelia.